Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Real and Jordan Dimmy. Our guest today is a accomplished violinist, dancer, performer, recording artist. Let me keep flattering her. Her new album is out June 16th. Is that right? Yeah, Duality. Please welcome Lindsay Sterling. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Last time you were here, you were promoting your Christmas album and we were roasting the little drummer boy. That's what I remember. <laughs> you were just like... Little drummer boy. All right. What happened? Remind me what happened with Little Drummer Boy? But you you weren't you weren't uh, I think you weren't here for that show, but basically she did a, a version of Little Drummer Boy that was a little bit more complicated than the traditional a rumpa bump bump thing. So yeah, we we're talking I got, about how- I got some flack for that. People were like, How dare you roast a classic? And I was like, Hey, it's just an opinion. Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. To- love well, it. My, my my theory is that you know, it was maybe like the backup drummer boy. You know, and you just didn't have time to prepare or something. You didn't yeah. have time to prepare for meeting Christ. And he's yeah. like, dang it, this is all I got. <laughs> all right. So uh, you just, we're, we're recording this the day that you, uh, that the Inner Gold video with Royal and the Serpent premiered. In fact, it premiered about two hours ago. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll get into the video first, but when a, when a video premieres, are you like refreshing to see what the views are? Are you like going on the comments? Or are you just like, I don't want to look at it? You know, I love to be a part of the excitement. It's like as an artist, I think there's two approaches. There is either you throw it out into the world and you try not to like care, or you lean into the excitement of the people that are excited. Like there's going to be plenty of people that don't love your stuff that maybe say mean things and stuff, but really leaning into the places that are safe, you know, where you know your community is going to rally with you and be excited with you. I love doing that. And, you know, I love to see what people think of it and what it means to them. And I, I know now after years of doing this, we're the safe places to go. And if I want critique critique, I know where those places are to go. I mean, the internet has just become such a crazy place. I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. I actually think there's going to be an anti-revolution, like an anti like cyber world revolution. There has to be within like the next 20 years, because we need to kind of just like, go backwards. We've yeah. gone too far. Do you think we've gone a little bit too far? AI, like oh, for sure. Videos, all that. And the way like artists have to be so involved in so much of not making the art. How do you feel about that? Like where we are with that? You know, it is, it is interesting to be an artist means such a different thing than even when I, I started and I started in social media. Like I started through YouTube. That's how I, you know, made my way. And so it's like, I I guess I never fully did the traditional artist thing. I've always been pretty accessible to my fans um, and pretty transparent. However, it's just, it has gotten so insane. The amount of content you are expected to post, um, you know, and, and the amount that you're supposed to be showing like these different sides of yourself that maybe like, that's not why I became an artist. Isn't for you to know my political views or isn't because I want to share, you know, certain things, but everybody kind of expects. And so it really is like this, this thing, I think everyone has to learn for themselves, whether you're an artist or whether you're just someone who has an Instagram account, like, where do you draw that line of how much you let people in? Because people are going to ask you for everything and you have to really draw a boundary of like what you're okay, letting people know and what things you're going to hold sacred for yourself. And I don't know, it, it is interesting though. And I do think you're right that eventually it's going to go so far where web three takes over and then eventually everybody's gonna be like, I'm done. I actually want to exist yeah. in a real world. Yeah. <clears throat> Before the apocalypse happens though, uh, you got this album coming out <laughs> in June. Circle back. Okay. Circle back. <laughs> um, so where did the title duality come from? What, what two things are you considering like the duality in the title? You know, it's, there were so many things that kind of led to this title. And I'll just say, I, I really think that all, people have so much complexity in, complexity in us because we have conflicting parts of ourselves. Like I love that, you know, that old story about like which wolf will win the fight. You know, these two wolves are inside of you and one of them is greedy and one of them is kind and which one's going to win and it's the one you feed. And I, I really think that we all have like these very conflicting parts of ourselves. Like sometimes we feel brave and like so strong and powerful. And then in a another moment you can feel so weak and scared you know but it's both you and so this is just kind of expressing the different dualities that we face and i i not only you know it was fun to kind of think about like i want this song to kind of represent abundance and lack i want this song to represent being broken yet being whole um and you know so finding all these different dualities that the songs represent but i also kind of have two sides of the album 
um, there's one side that's super cinematic and then there's one side that's a little more fresh and, you know, and sounding more current. And so um, it was fun to present it not only through like themes, but also actually through the, the sonics that you hear. Now, the inner goal of the song is a collaboration with Royal and the Serpent, a friend mm -hmm. of the show. Oh, um, I love her. Yes. Um, how did you become acquainted with her? Did you know her before? Or was this like a management set you guys up? Or like, how did this whole thing come together? You know, I actually, I mean, I've heard of her, of course, and I've, I've heard her music. <clears throat> We'd never met. And uh, we were actually like, I, I write this song and I'm like, ooh, that becomes the scary part when you find a song you love, but there's a huge missing piece of like the demo vocalist, you know, was the girl I wrote it with. Um, and it was just like, we both knew her voice wasn't right for it. So it's like, discovering i don't even know what but then when i was actually my manager that suggested royal and the serpent and her voice is so unique and so like so like quietly confident and so anyways it's I like at the same time it's like whispery and powerful at the same time yeah, uh, yeah. totally exactly and i was like yeah. i just love it and also i love that her aesthetic as an artist is so different than mine and I thought it really represented well this idea of like duality. Like she's almost like a yin to my yang and vice versa. And um, and I loved that. I was like, she is so cool and so different from me. Like, and, and it just worked out. I love it when collaborations happen and they just, all the pieces fall together because that doesn't always happen. <laughs> so the, the choreography on this is really cool. It's not as, when people think of Lindsay Sterling choreography, they think of this flowing, you know, beautiful, you know, kind of thing and this is very like you know a little bit jer herky jerky <laughs> and like, you know. yeah it's called the herky jerky that's the style that's actually. the style yeah is that a real thing really? or no. yeah i thought, I thought maybe like herky jerky was a style of choreography and there's like special choreographers who specialize in herky jerky okay, yes i found the herky jerky no but i i think we should we should clone that as a yeah. you know that is the coin yeah. term now for the style right right so um, how long does that take to like both implement the choreography and then learn it? You know, this one, I've worked with the same choreographer for years, Ashley Gonzalez, love her. She And um, this was such, like you said, such a different style than I've ever done. And it actually took a couple passes of figuring it out because the choreography was so much a part of the storytelling. And so, you know, she would send me ideas. I'd send her back little ideas. And then finally we got in the room together. It probably took um, like a whole day of us just being in the room after we tried several attempts prior. And then it took um, another full day to learn it. And then I was practicing. You know, it's funny because it doesn't look nearly as complicated as some of the choreography I've done in the past. But this one was very like a little bit one of those. Ooh, it's like it's like this, you know. Um, yeah. So it, it was tough. And I was so excited that Royal and the Serpent, like originally I gave her the option of like, you can be a part of the story and, you know, you'll need to learn some choreography. You'll need to come to rehearsal or you can just, you know, and I was so excited when she's like, I want to like, let's lean in. Like, I would love to come to rehearsal. I would love to learn the choreography. And she put in time like out of rehearsal. So, I mean, just, yeah. she was an amazing collaborator. Not all artists are willing to do that. It's actually pretty rare that someone's willing to like jump into your world and then make it their own world. And, um, so anyways, it was, it was so cool. And she kept downplaying it. She's like, I don't know. Like, if I'm not good, you don't have to use me in the choreo. I want to try. Oh, wow. And you know, she was really downplaying it. So we were kind of prepared. We had an extra dancer on standby to take her place. And she like walks in and just nails it. We're like, you were really, you were really downplaying it. She's like, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dimmy, Dimmy, you're a great dancer. You could do some uh, choreography, right? <laughs> Are you a dancer? Well I don't I'm, I am a little shy. I'm a little shy. <laughs> dancing. shy. Not, you know what I mean? I don't, know. I don't know. But I don't know. I do sometimes. You ever listen to a song and then you like make up a dance in your head, like to the song you're like, and like in your head, you're like doing this whole thing, but like, you know, can't sometimes translate that. That's yeah. where the choreographer comes in, right? Thank heavens. Thank heavens for choreographers. Do you, do you do that, Lindsay? Do you have like ideas for basic ideas for how like a dance is going to happen and then you like bring it to your choreographer? Or, or is she like completely from scratch making everything up? I mean, she is the, she makes it sparkle. I come to her with ideas and I like send her little videos that um, are hilarious because I'll be like, you know, something kind of like, you know, and I like, like do the little motion. Of, of the of those, like you know, 
they're bad. They're so funny. But she's she's learned to somehow see the potential through the rudimentary. And I always tell her, like, like translate it. Like the Lindsay moves can be translated into real moves. She's the translator and without, yeah, it, but it is funny. I'll like kind of dictate a little bit of like here and then it gets big and, you know, like spin around. But she understands it now. Can we right. talk about Britney Spears for a second? Just like, I don't yes. know why it's popping into my head right now, but I saw this like back in like the golden age, right? Mm. Of like, oh my God, like slave for you. That, that music, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Kind of movie, so like, good. What a time. You know what I, I mean? Like, I am I so like glad. So many artists. You know what yeah. I mean? I often think I'm so glad that I was like a teenager and in that phase of like when I loved to like go out dancing with friends like in college. I'm so glad that pop music was at its best. I feel just so blessed to have wow. had the queens like Britney Spears all the way through like Katy Perry and God. Right. Like, like that, you know what I mean? Yes. It was it was the it was the golden age, you know, of pop I was actually talking to my little sister about that the other day. And I was like, because we were we were listening to the radio, and I was like, no, Jillian, like I was trying to explain to her how much radio has changed. Yeah. I was like, I understand, like when I was kind of, you know, I don't know, middle school, we had like Britney Spears. Like imagine yeah. you know I mean? on yeah. the radio. I mean, crazy. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, it was pop it was music, pop music has gotten darker, you know, it's just gotten like the tone and the, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of less fun. <laughs> it's not as bright and cheery. As it's not as like bubblegum. It's a reflection of the times. Oh, yes. Maybe it is. Yeah. 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 So that's why I go on YouTube and watch a really bright and fun Lindsey Sterling video to kind of cheer me up, you know? Uh, that's what, thank you. I, I'm yeah. honored. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Lindsey Sterling videos, I was just like going through the YouTube channel and I watched that video of you performing at Lollapalooza Paris last year, which is crazy to do like a festival performance, like with your violin set up, you know, for like a very like rock and roll style setting yeah. um, with this like European. So uh, time out. We, we interviewed the cellist Hauser the other day. Oh, um, cool. uh, the, the world's sexiest cellist. And uh, <laughs> is that his tagline? That's his tagline. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a reserved trademark on there. Yeah. Dang it. I really miss the mark. Honest. Yeah. I what? mean, I, I'm so on a roll right now. I know. <laughs> I feel like I've been branding myself incorrectly. I could have been, you know, getting that way all these years. Dang it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, <laughs> what, I, what I was getting at was we were talking about how do like European audiences appreciate classical music more than American audiences. That's kind of the stereotype. Uh, what was it like playing for that crowd in Paris in that situation? It was awesome. I It was such a special, it's one of those snapshots you take of your life when you're like, I'm going to remember this forever. Um, you know, and I, it was also kind of a little bit scary because as a violinist, I, I just know that everybody in the audience that doesn't know who on earth I am, they're like, when is she going to start singing? You know, like when, do, when does the vocal come in? But it's a violin show, you know, it's, it's instrumental. Um, and we were also opening up for, um, oh my gosh, my brain is blanking. Anyways. Oh my gosh. Stray Kids. Woo! We were opening up for like, you know, a huge K-pop act, which is so different from anything I do, obviously, but to go out there and give it my all and then be really received by this audience that was, you know, definitely probably surprised. It was, it was amazing. It was really fun. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I do think that European audiences are a little bit more open to just like, Oh, okay, cool. You know, and classical music is special over there to them. Well, your first album just like popped off in Europe. Like it was just like a huge hit in Europe. So yeah, yeah I think that just like, and maybe even instrumental music is appreciated too. Not just, not just a classical thing. Yeah. Um, have you, you, you doing this thing with uh, the vocals with, with Royal. Um, are you, do you, do you like the idea of like making that a thing? Like, you know, like Kenny G did where he would have like vocalists do like, and he's playing or like Santana do like, you mean you like, you're like Rob Thomas, like yeah. kind of thing going on here. Is that like, I, I would, I would be cool to have a whole album of yeah. like guest vocalists. Is Maybe that that'll be my mean? next project. I, you know, I always like to dabble in every album. I'll have a few collaborators and a few vocalists come on and it, it is always really fun um, to do that. And uh, so, yeah, maybe that, maybe that's my next project is a full, like full collaboration album. I still, I'm still waiting for that. Like Lindsay Sterling out of left field top five, like radio hit, you know, like, Me too. Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, like, you know how like, uh, like Lorena McKinnett um, back in the day or like, you know, you have these kind of like that for, you know, they have this huge audience, but like that one hit just kind of like, you know. Maybe- That's, yes, I know. I've been like thinking it is kind of, I, I'm so grateful that I've been able to make a career without having a hit because, right. you know, right. it's, it's you know, it's an interesting path to chart. Usually people have this catalyst moment where they had their their hit and then they learn right. how to ride the wave. And I'm like, I've never had a hit. I'm very grateful that I've been able to have a career without it. But man, I would love to have like, like you're saying, that is a moment that I'm like, I'm hoping for someday if if willing, you know? Yeah. Well, honestly, call, call back to uh, to your to your last single, I, The Untolder, mm-hmm. which is kind of a companion piece in terms of visuals to... Um, uh, Geez, I'm blanking. Um, inner gold. There oh, we go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You got it. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, and the 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 melody, I guess, the refrain from that is so catchy and so like, I it's so cinematic. Um, and I was like, that's that's such a good theme. You know, that'd be good on like a movie or something. Uh, right? You, because you're so visual, when you're writing a song, do you think about what the visuals for that song will look like, kind of as you're making it? A lot of times I do. Sometimes I'll have a like a even a story in mind that I want to portray as I'm, you know, as I'm writing it. I'm like, oh, especially I feel like a lot in my older videos, um, I knew like I want this one to be about like a western town and it's a duel between a guitar outlaw and me protecting my town with a violin. Like I used to do that all the time with my videos. Um, is I would have the video idea and so I'd write a song so I could make the video. Um, and I feel like I write a little bit more thematically now, like what what essence, what like emotions and um but i do i was really inspired to try to like make this album a little extra cinematic so almost like taking the approach of like if i was scoring a film that had this emotion in it like what would i do has anyone have you done that before have you scored tv or film or anything like that is it something you would want to do or i've dabbled in the world and i would love to do more like it's something that i find super interesting and exciting and um so yeah it's definitely like on my list to like continue to build that muscle it's a different muscle but also that was kind of like in this album i was like i kind of want to show that i can do it by the music i write for my own album and then hopefully that'll bring it you know hopefully it'll bring the stuff in right 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 do you have a do you have a go ahead go ahead uh, well no i'm just it's so cool because you just think about being an entertainer, no matter what kind of avenue that you choose. It's just, it's such like a, that's a path, right? And I'm curious, like, when did you have that like aha moment? Like, was it something that you always wanted to do? Like, when was that moment that called you like to, to where you are now? Mm, That's a great question. Um, I actually was in a, like a pageant when I was trying to earn money to go to college. And so I found out about this like scholarship program, but it was a pageant. You had to do a talent, you had to do all the things. And um, I was gonna play like a classical concerto for my talent, but there was like five other violinists that were all doing very similar classical concertos. And I was like, dang it. I was like, I'll never stand out. Like some of these girls are better than I am, to be honest, you know? And so I thought, well, what could I, no, for sure they were. Um, But I remember thinking to myself, okay, well, how could I, how could I just be a little bit more unique with it maybe? And so I ended up writing a little rock song and I decided I was going to like, kind of like jump around the, and wear a little rock outfit instead of a gown. And um, anyways, it was the first time, like I'd done many recitals, I'd performed, I'd, I'd impressed people many times with my violin, but when I performed this little number and I felt the crowd's reaction, I felt like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I feel like I've ever actually entertained a crowd. Like they were smiling. They were like hitting their neighbor, like, this is fun. You know, it was just different. And anyways, I ended up winning and like going all the way through to like the national one. And, um, and it was just this moment where I was like, huh, there's something here. I need to chase this little nugget. And it wasn't even until years later that I figured out what exactly that nugget was, but I never forgot that moment. And it's what started the wheels turning of like, how could I, how could I make this my life? Wow. That's, a, that's, a, I feel inspired now. I feel like really under accomplished <laughs> after hearing that story. Wait, Wait, why? For a second, like pageants were like, so this was like a, was this a beauty pageant? It, yes, it was. They always called them scholarship programs. Who's but, I know. Who signed yes. up for that? Was it your mom? I feel like my mom did that to me like when I was like seven and I was, oh, really? I, I, yeah, I was, I was struggling with that. 
It's yeah, I actually went willing because I found out the amount of money that I could win, you know, and I was, Yay. I was just like, I, you know, I was working at Target trying to earn money for college and it was a cashier. Like, I, um, I was a sales floor girl. Oh, okay. Mostly soft goods was my specialty, you see. Soft goods. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> the oh. clothing. <laughs> oh, clothing. Okay, okay. I, wor I worked at I worked at Gap in the Banana Republic when I was in college, so. Oh, so soft yeah. goods as well. Yes. Yes, yes. Soft goods. <laughs> soft, we have the connection here. The soft yes, we do. Soft lots goods. of, lots yeah. of folding. <laughs> I still fold my jeans the Gap way when I fold my jeans. Oh, it's I bet they're so, so crisp. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real easy way, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, I, the I, we do, take. Like, that's like a TikTok thing you do. That's like a good TikTok, how to fold jeans. Yeah. This could be your, your thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got off track. Oh, but no, I, I found out about it and um, signed up. And I remember immediately feeling like a fish out of water, but I was like very determined to like figure out how to make this feel like I could do it without feeling like a total fake in it. And I think that figuring out how to make the violin performance fun made me feel like, all right, I feel like I'm myself in this and I'm not like, I'm not pretending to be something I'm not, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it ended up being a really good experience that taught me so much about just like presence and, you know, stepping on stage confidently. And, you know, it, it was a really good experience, but yeah, I, I never in a million years in high school would have thought I would ever have got, gotten into a pageant. And when you go ahead, Demi, you said, well, can we have like a confidence 101, like from, from this experience? Oh, a confidence 101. I'm trying to. Yeah. Think like what, tell, tell us more about what you learned. I'm so curious. Well, I remember they just, it was very simple things, um, you know, cause we were like 18 year old girls, but they taught us how to do an interview and how to like, you know, things like when you are a teenager and someone's asking you a bunch of questions, you kind of almost want to look down, but you know, they were the simplest mm -hmm. things about looking in the eye of the person, take a moment to really pause before you speak and actually listen to what they're saying and look them in the wow. eye rather than starting to rehearse in your head, what you're going to say, like really listen. And it's amazing how you'll be able to then come out with something good to say in these like interviews or, you know, those kind of things and learning to like carry yourself well, like with good posture and I don't know, all these things that you're like, I feel like I just, need to sit up more. I just, definitely have like, obviously I've forgotten all of it. <laughs> like, my posture. It's wow. like slouch, but yeah. Let's see who know. has the best posture. At, at no, the I have the worst posture. <laughs> you guys are like used to posture being so hard for me. Yeah. It, it is hard, especially because now we're all trained to like, almost like I know. down and with our phones. Yeah. We're all going to have back problems. Like it's, yeah. it's inevitable. <laughs> When you uh, when you went on America's Got Talent, um, Sharon Osbourne famously said that you were never going to be able to fill a big theater in Vegas, and then of course you yeah. did. Is that? I mean, obviously it's good for social media. It's it's a good little like moment. But how personally did you actually take that? How much did it actually motivate you? Well, in the moment, I was crushed, and I like there's no other way to say it. And um, I was humiliated, you know, because um, I, I got the whole works. Like I got the X, you know, the big loud buzzer. I got, you know, all three judges basically said we don't want you here anymore, and it it was just absolutely crushing because I, I think I had put so much stock into the fact that this was my make or break moment. Like this was my chance. If I didn't get it, you know, through this experience, then what chance did I have? And I think that that's where the danger lies is when you really put all the power into somebody else's hands or into one moment's hands, because, um, you know, that, that loses, that, that gives everything away. It leaves you with nothing left to walk away with. And so when that ended, I just really felt like I can't do this anymore. They obviously are right. Obviously I'm not enough. Um, but you know, the, the whole last song, um, I've done told her was just about taking a step back and letting the brain do its thing, think its thoughts, all the things, because the brain's going to be the first to react. It's always going to be the loudest. But then like, what does your heart say? Like, what is the truer compass, which is your heart? It's always going to be a lot more honest. It's going to be more true. It's going to be more cued in. And the voice of my heart, actually, when it all settled down and the like humiliation started to wear off, um, it was just like, you're not done yet there's more for you here. And the word that I ended up adding to like these statements was like, yeah, I really wasn't very good that night. They weren't wrong. They were right. But the one thing I had to add to it was like, yet, okay, I wasn't good enough that night, but like, I'm not good enough yet. And I can get there. I can work harder. I can get better. Like this is a new craft. I'm, I'm, I've never performed in front of an audience like that before. I was terrified. Like 
you know, not one moment of your life should ever determine like your potential for the future. And that was a huge lesson to learn. And I don't think I would have gotten to where I'm at today if I hadn't fallen down like that and then had to get back up on my own two feet with my own, my own merit. Damn, we got to call this episode Life Lessons. <laughs> well, I'm teaching so you how to stand and how to get up when you fall. Yeah. I feel like I'm, this is like the most useful TED Talk I've ever oh. heard. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Have you, ever, have you ever been asked to do a TED Talk? No, I haven't. Maybe I'll submit. I actually yeah. am not a fan of TED Talk. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just say not? it. Think, no. I think. I, have you guys ever watched TED Talk? Like, every I'm, I'm not a TED Talk person myself. No. Yeah, it just seems like they get to the point in the last two minutes, and you're like, "Wait, can you just elaborate on that point a little more?" Like you've told ten, you know what I mean? Right. You're like, "Wait, now it's done." Thirty wow. minutes. Now you. What's this like? You know? Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. It's been a while since I watched a TED Talk. So yeah. I'll have to go research. Like, are you yeah. philosophy or like? You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of um? What's her name? Abraham Hicks. Yes. I you love Abraham Hicks. Yes. I love those. I love that kind of stuff. I love reading books on like whether it's philosophy or yeah. like um wellness books or like how to improve yourself yeah. or like books about the mind and manifestation. Ooh, that's, that's like my coffee. I love it. Believe in manifestation? Do I believe in it? Yeah. A thousand percent. I I feel like I'm here today and it's, it's fun to look back along the way and see all the little circles, the little tiny full circle moments that have happened that came from earlier manifestations where it was years till wow. the circle closed. And you're like, Oh my gosh, there it was. But I think we're all so much more magical than we realize. And I think we live in this very mortal world. That's like governed by practicality and laws of science and rules. And this is how things work. But like, I think we forget that we're actually incredibly magical and that supersedes all of those rules. Like it's amazing what you can accomplish when you like put out these, you know, our little magic into the world and what will come back when you send it. I feel super motivated right now. Yeah, uh, let's go. I'm what going, do you use on those days though? Like it's so crazy because I just feel like like patterns, right? Like everything yeah. is just like a pattern. So what do you do on those days when you're just not tapped in? You can't turn on, you can't turn it on as easy, maybe as you did yesterday or, or last week. It's just an off week. Like, what do you do on those days to get to get keep going? Oh, I know what you're talking about. And it's so hard. Yeah. And it it's so funny how there's no rhyme or reason sometimes to it. You're like, why am I for some reason I'm really struggling or I'm really depressed, like right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I I think it's reminding myself honestly that nothing's permanent. The good and the bad. When I'm feeling that super like charged, like I'm happy for no reason, I remind myself not that like, well, this is going to end soon, but it's like, hey, be really grateful for this moment because you are you're relishing in like a joy that cannot last forever. And then when I'm really sad, it's also this thought of like, I don't know why today is really hard, but I'm going to get up and keep moving because I know it's not going to last forever. I know I'm going to be fine. I know I'm going to get through it because I have in the past. And, you know, whether there is a reason or there isn't a reason that's my mantra is like, I know I'm going to be okay. I might not be okay right now, but I know I will be. And I think hope is what allows you to get up and maybe not have your best day ever or like your most productive day ever, but it allows me to at least be like, well, I'm going to check something off the list today yes. and give myself a gold star for like making my bed and, you know, calling my mom. Cause that's all I could do today. You know? So really like knowing where you're at, but like knowing that it's not going to be there forever. Oh my and let's, God. And let's let this serve as a reminder to call your mother too. Yeah. Everybody call your mom. Everyone call your mom. Call your mommy. Yeah. I just feel like I have, I've adopted this new thing where it's like, I don't, there's certain days where like, I don't care what it is. I will drag you through this list of things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. and you're going to do them. Sometimes you just need to just have that chat with yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, totally. right. Absolutely. And it's, it's a funny thing. Like, I don't know, like I, I went through some stuff last year and it was like, that was just really hard and it, it took me out for a moment. And I remember thinking about that a lot of like, when is it the day that you have to be like, Hey, it's okay that you can't do what you wanted to do today, or it's okay that you're not going to be up here. And then other days where you're like, girl, it is time I'm to, sorry. yeah, you are, you are not going to be sorry for yourself today. It is time to like put the ice cream away. It is time to get that list out. And I think that that's like your inner voice, like this whole album, I wrote a lot about the inner voice. And it's like, that's the only true compass you can ever follow is the one that you know is in here, not up here in your brain, but it'll tell you when it's time to self-care and when it's time to like get up and go and do that list, even though you don't want to. 
Yeah. Are you yeah. List type of girl, like yes. You, it's the only way to do it, right? I I am a I'm very much a list girly, and I love it because you get to check it off. Flavor? Just out of curiosity, because you mentioned ice cream. Oh, I love the like the private selection brand. It's the it's like the cheap brand at like Ralph's or Fry's or like Kroger. Oh. It's that brand, um, private selection brand, and they have this like chocolate moose tracks flavor that is just like better than anything you get at like the nice places. Yeah, our Safeway has a really our Vons has it's probably, a, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Vons has it. Yeah, yeah, so good, so good. All right. Yeah. They get like Vons, like Vons ice cream sponsors your tour. Oh my gosh, private selection, please sponsor, sponsor me. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of tour, um, what are you gonna do in support of this of this album? Do you got something big lined up or like what, what's what's going on after it comes out? We do. We're hitting the road in July and I'm so excited. We're doing going all the way across the US and then we're going to go other places once it's not announced yet, but we will be going other places outside the US. Um, and I'm so excited about it. Like I, I really am trying to like lean into the, the feeling of the album and every song, even the ones that we're going to play that are old favorites. Um, you know, just bringing this idea of like, your inner voice and duality and like loving all the different pieces of yourself is kind of the theme of, of the show. And I'm, I'm excited to lean in and be like a little more artsy than I like normally am. And I, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm stoked. When you have a big tour like this, how much do you, how much preparation goes in? Like, are you already you like, when we get off this interview, are you going to be like starting to like, you got meetings or something or like, um... yeah, we've been already like planning stuff. We, you know, we had like a, I, we called it a play day about a month ago where me and like two of my dancers and some of the crew members all kind of went into a stage and we tried out a bunch of different techniques and ideas and like very theatrical effects to see how does this actually look and how would it feel to like have this attached to my back when I'm playing like, you know, just trying out all these ideas. Um, so yeah, we've already been talking about the tour and I've been planning it for months. It's kind of part of the writing process for me too. It, Cause I don't like writing music. I find it a little bit, soul sucking. I don't know why. Um, but what gets me through it is knowing that eventually it's going to be this thing that becomes alive for other people. And I'm going to get to perform it. I'm going to get to make music videos for it and bring it to life. And so to kind of keep me going through the writing process while I'm writing, I'm thinking of ideas for like, Oh, this one for tour, this would be so cool. Or, Oh, I see the music video. Okay. I'm going to start to like plan that and get costumes. Like, yeah. you know, it kind of keeps me excited. You're a true performer. That's really interesting that the, that the performance aspect of it and the prospect of that is more exciting to you than the actual composition. A and thousand percent. Yeah. And that's why I started doing it was that moment on that stage of the, the pageant. It was that feeling that I got on stage wow. of like truly connecting with people and, and being, able to entertain them that made me be like, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And for me, it was never like the reason I put my first YouTube video up was because I wanted to tour. Like I wanted to, I wanted to find an audience and I you realized people an example of what it could look like. almost. Yeah. It was like, well, you got to find the people. So I'm going to show them what I can do. Cause I had played little venues and like done little showcases and nothing was picking up. And anyway, so it was YouTube that I was like, if I want to tour, I could like advertise myself on this platform. And anyways, so that, that the goal though was always not the, not the writing or the computer or, it, or the views. It was always like, I just want to get on a stage. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the, one of their, uh, you know, kind of effect of, of your popularity is you've created this like army of, of young women, girls who want to be dancers slash violinists. <laughs> Uh, uh, what, what uh, that's gotta be, a, um, a source of joy for you to meet the, your younger fans, the ones who are like into music because of you. Oh, it's, it's so sweet. It's so special. And you know, it, it's everything from sometimes, yeah, little tiny girls and their little tutus that come to the shows and, um, to adults that are like, you know, I always wanted to play and, you know, they, they've found it to be their new hobby, you know? And I, I just, I love any shape or form where someone is inspired to pick up something new and to be like a little bit of an inspiration for that for people um, is I think the greatest compliment you can have. And also the cool, like one of the coolest things, like I think of the people that inspired me and how it changed my life. And, you know, so, so yeah. I have a question about violin. Um, so, okay. Is this just in this one instance, because I, I, um, I feel like 
there's this girl that I knew who was like a ball, like a really good violinist. And she'd always have um, like literal like hickeys on her neck, but they weren't Wait, hickeys. Do I have it? Yes. No. I don't have it. No. Well, I have like a slight permanent one, but it, like after I've played a lot or when I'm on tour, sometimes it gets even a little bit like agitated. Yeah. So it's like fun facts. Violinists like have like a permanent hickey. hickey. Literally violin hickeys. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's, too, it's right? true. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> impressed that you know this. This is yeah, so cool, right? Cool. I'm really new to me. I've never heard of this before. I'm trying to draw a comparison of like a, a like, thumb, like thumb callus for a for a classical guitar player or something. Yeah, or, yeah, it yeah. is. We I've got like weird like. You know, I've also got like a callus on the side of this finger. It looks like my finger's crooked, but it's from holding the bow for so. So you've got all these weird little, oh. little things like the my fingers are calloused on the ends from you know from the strings. But but yeah. this is the most obvious one to people where they're like, uh, and you're like, no, 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 it's I've just been practicing. It's just like oh a my God. a UFC fighter with cauliflower ears permanently. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> stars. Yeah. I think that's actually permanent though, which is like, yeah, right. Nice. I mean, yeah, it's like a, it, it's funny. That? Like I am a, I have a quite nice jawline on this side, but not on this side because the violin, the violin oh, wow. is like, like there's a difference in my face physically because Wait, so violin, which side is your violin side. So this is, this is my violin side, but you can see that there's like an extra amount of like cartilage that's been built up right there. No way. And then this one wow. is like, Oh, look at how snatched she is. But so I definitely am like, Oh, I have a better wow. side. <laughs> oh yeah. You have like, a, okay. So yeah, you look well, naturally kind of like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. That's some good. You know, it's also like, well, Hey, we're, the price you pay worth it worth, you know, I'll take a little unchiseled jawline to be able yeah. to like, you know, yeah. do my craft. Exactly. <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, we got to let you go, Lindsay, but thank you so much for joining us on the show. Congratulations, the album. We look forward to the tour. I'm sure it'll look and sound amazing. Um, thank you. Yes. Do you have a, do you have a, um, a single coming up before the album or is, or is, or is Intergold the, the last thing before the album? We have one more coming out and then, um, which is, it's pretty baller. It's a song. It's very unique than, you know, from all my other repertoire. So I'm very excited about this next one. And then the one that comes out with the album though, I think, I think that's the one I'm most excited to like share just creatively. So anyways, but I, I'm excited for all of it. It's, it's a really, you know, it's, it's such a relief after the process of writing an album, you go back and forth between loving the work and hating the work, loving it, feeling like it's the best stuff you've ever written. Then the next day you're like, I can't release this. This is so bad. Like, you know, and I think every so artist. Demi, Demi's like, yeah, that sounds like Demi's uh, thought process sometimes, right? I mean, yeah, because you, are you an artist yourself? Yeah, I make music, yeah. So you know, you know that that's, that's just the way of an artist's mind. And it's that's it's perfect. really hard to be trapped in there. But it's so great when you finally share the thing and you're like, I'm really happy with it. Like I'm, I'm really proud of it. And I'm really glad that I, I didn't believe the little demons in my mind. And again, that goes back to like this whole idea of duality of like, how can you love something one second and hate it the next, but that's just these voices in your head and learning to listen to the right one is like, I think the key to being happy in life. And so anyways, I'm, I'm glad that I listened to the right one. The right wolf, the right wolf. The right wolf, exactly. Oh, Full wolf. circle. <laughs> Nice callback. Nice call. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Lindsay. We will talk to you later. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Lindsay Sterling. Jordan, which wolf are you? I feel like we're like, I'm like the good wolf. You're the... <laughs> I'm the nice wolf. You're the mean wolf. Oh, wow. Oh, that's not, I don't know. I don't know about that. No? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. That'll be it for us. As always, go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edwards Studio. Follow Dimmy at Dimmy underscore Ramos. Go to Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your podcast or past episodes. And uh, yeah, check us out on TikTok at It's Real with Jordan Dimmy. All right. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.